so let's uh, let's recap what has been going on um, with what is really important, as uh, Dan Frumkin was saying in the interview. Um, what happens next is wholly a function of what our basically senators do. And um, last night, it's been interesting. Last night, you saw a couple of Republican senators, Ben Sass, Burr, who is the uh, chair of the Senate Intelligence Committee. Um, they came out and said, this is, this is disturbing. The timing is really uh, disturbing. Uh, Lindsey Graham said, well, he needed to go. And you saw something from Dianne Feinstein, which was, you know, this sort of like off the cuff, uh, well, not even off the cuff, a statement. President Trump called me at 5.30 p.m. and indicated he would be removing Director Comey, saying the FBI needed a change. Here's the next sentence. The next FBI director must be strong and independent and will receive a fair hearing in the Judiciary Committee. That, to me, sounds like total capitulation. But this morning, we see Chuck Schumer, and Schumer came out to his credit. And look, again, uh, this is politics. And if you want to leverage something like this, I mean, aside from the, it, it just being sort of extraordinary and, and problematic, Here's Chuck Schumer. He, you have number two. Schumer calls for the uh, full Senate. So Chuck Schumer last night came out and made a call for, um, for a special prosecutor. But then he said, put out a call to all Democratic senators, be in your seats at 930 tomorrow morning on the Senate floor. Because Chuck Schumer is now, and to his credit, is... <laughs> is using this and demanding um, uh, certain things. Here he is uh, at 9.30 this morning. But we need to hear from this administration and about what happened and why and what is going to happen next. And that is why, again, I am requesting that the majority leader call a closed and, if necessary, classified all sessions briefing with the attorney general and the deputy attorney general separately at which they can be asked these questions. I hope the majority leader agrees with me that we need to get to the bottom of this and get a handle on all the facts so that we can grapple with them. I remind him and my Republican friends that nothing less is at stake than the American people's faith in our criminal justice system and the integrity of the executive branch of our government. So here's Schumer basically saying, you know, we're going to start to gum up the works, putting the onus on Mitch McConnell, calling him to account. McConnell's had no problem with it. And the question is, will there be enough pressure on Mitch McConnell? Uh, Schumer has his asks. He's calling for, like, the, uh, the, the special hearings with the attorney general and the assistant attorney general. The idea is, well, it's both like one of those things like where the cop pulls you over and, you know, separates the driver and the passenger. But it's also to find out if this was initiated by Donald Trump. Because if it was initiated by the White House, as opposed to the story they put out, again, this is how you develop a scandal uh, and maintain a narrative. Um, this is also how you start to peel off support for the president's agenda. Because what I want, what my agenda is, I mean, as, as much as I would like to see uh, Donald Trump gone, the number one uh, agenda that I have is that Donald Trump's agenda and Paul Ryan's agenda are stopped. So, for instance, I don't want Medicaid to be cut by 25 percent. I don't want my insurance to be able to get uh, to um, to basically walk away from me if I get cancer. And there's a whole host of other policies. How is this related? This morning, the U.S. Senate 
voted down a resolution to repeal an Obama-era rule regulating methane emissions from drilling on public lands. So, I mean, for all those people who are concerned about fracking and its implications to climate change, because methane can leak, this retains requirements about these things on public lands. How did that happen? How did, with a 52 to 48 Senate, this get knocked down? John McCain, Susan Collins, Lindsey Graham, these huge, huge environmentalists. Maybe, voted, maybe Susan Collins 50% and uh, Graham and McCain about 10%. Heidi Heitkamp, that um, real uh, thorn in the side of, oh, yeah. uh, of the fossil fuel Crusader industry. For and Joe energy. Manchin, who is a, a warrior in the fight for climate change. I would tend to for call climate him change. the Bill McKibben of the United States Senate. <laughs> they all voted against the repeal of this. Now, remember, this is a, a repeal under the Congressional Review Act. So when it gets repealed, it's virtually impossible. Not, not impossible, but sh- super close to impossible to reinstate this uh, type of rule. You can't do it by presidential fiat. You can't do it by agency. There has to be a full um, uh, Senate and House reinstatement of this rule. What? And the point being that before he voted against this, John McCain was talking about how this whole Comey situation is, a, is bad. And so... There is a political efficacy in talking about this stuff and pressuring on this stuff. It is very problematic if it becomes the raison d'etre as it is, which is French for something like the primary primary reason reason. to exist. But Oh, hmm. look at Matt trying to get back back into the game here. I see. Look at the brains on Lack. Effective. This is effective, and the more pressure that's put on Mitch McConnell and Paul Ryan et al., um, the more you're going to see the Republican agenda fail. Now, first of all, Sam, I got a couple questions for you. Now, look, I oppose fracking like everyone else, but first of all, you know that my wife was the greatest fracker in the history of human development of all time. She's also a great criminal. Now, the question I have to ask you, what do you think's worse for our national parks, methane or a full nuclear confrontation with Russia? Because when you talk like that and when John McCain votes against the methane rules, what do you think is helping? Ha- what do you think they're doing? They're setting us up for a war, Sam. And Tulsi Gabbard and Jimmy Dore and Jimmy Reefer Cake and various other people on YouTube with various types of conditions and ideas. <laughs> they are the ones who are stopping this from happening. But you, in your bloodlust for war with Russia, and that fat paycheck from MSNBC, are hurtling us to an unparalleled confrontation from which we will not survive as a species. Now, I ask you to stop being afraid to support Tulsi Gabbard and progressive Democrats. Hi, folks. It's Sam Cedar. You know me from just a minute ago. Listen, uh, we've had a problem on YouTube. Let me make a graphic uh, visualization. Uh, Back in March, our revenue and the ads that were monetized was a lot, like here. And now, over the course of actually within a day into April, (laughs) it's down to about here. Now, this is just a artist rendering, but that's basically it. Uh, We were uh, here, and now we're here. Uh, That's because of some uh, YouTube thing where advertisers were concerned on being on hate sites, and of course, uh, we're a news uh, organization that sometimes talks about hateful people, and we got caught up in their algorithm. I thought it would be fixed by now. It's not. We need your help to keep giving you free content on uh, YouTube, uh, we don't have the advertiser support that we had even back, you know, here. Um, so we're looking for your help. Go to our Patreon site. Give a couple of bucks. 
Literally, you could give a couple and it would be very helpful. Head over there. Here's the link right here or down there. It's somewhere around here. Find it and go help us out. Thanks so much. Enjoy the rest of the show.